Good evening. Welcome to the webinar. Today we'll be discussing our Master of Science in Health Informatics and our Certificate in Health Analytics. My name is Steve Johnson. I'm a professor of healthcare policy and research at Weill Cornell Medicine. I'm also the director of graduate training for the department. I'm joined here today by my colleague, Dr. Jessica Anker. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Jessica Anker. I'm an associate professor of healthcare policy and research, and I'm the director of the certificate program in health analytics. Thank you for being here, and thank you to all of you watching for joining us here today. If you've got any questions uh, while we're talking, please feel free to type them directly into the question window in your screen. Um, we'll see them as they come up. We'll make sure to answer them toward the end of the presentation. And also, we want to make sure you know that we're recording this presentation, and we will be posting it online tomorrow. So feel free to come back to our site later to watch anything that you might have missed. In today's webinar, we're going to be talking about two of our programs, the Master of Science in Health Informatics and our Certificate in Health Analytics. Uh, the webinar is designed to be useful to you uh, regardless of which of the two programs you're planning to apply for uh, because these programs do have shared courses and so the, the uh, information is relevant to everybody. So let's start, uh, Steve, by talking a little bit about the history of the programs here. Definitely, Jessica. So a little bit of background on our, our programs and our institution as well. In 1898, Cornell University established Cornell Medical College. As most of you know, Cornell's main campus is in Ithaca, New York. But the medical college was founded in New York City due to the many clinical training opportunities that were available. Today, the college is affiliated with multiple New York City-based medical institutions, such as New York Presbyterian, Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center, the Hospital for Special Surgery, Rockefeller University, and more. In 1952, Cornell University founded its Graduate School of Medical Sciences and began to offer PhD and other graduate degrees. In 1998, the institution was named Weill Cornell Medical College. And just recently, we officially became Weill Cornell Medicine to better represent the breadth and depth of everything we do best, world-class patient care, cutting-edge research, and of course, top-ranked education. Our department concentrates on studying and improving healthcare delivery to optimize the value of healthcare for patients across the country. Dr. Renu Kaushal, shown here, is our department chair, and she's an expert in healthcare quality, patient safety, and information technology. So let's go on and uh, talk about our programs in more detail. We've got some of the strongest graduate programs in our field. We've got a very diverse set of students and uh, applicants from those who are recently out of their undergraduate degrees as well as uh, people who are, have been in the field for 20 years or more. As you see on this slide, um, our master's program is completed, uh, can be completed in as little as one year as a full-time student or in up to two years as a part-time student. The master's degree uh, involves a um, research project and a thesis, which we'll talk about in more detail in a minute. And I'd also like to point out that our academic year is unique in that it's divided into three terms. We have a fall term that begins in September, a spring term that begins in January, and what we call our summer term, which begins in April. And that's what allows us to help our students complete the degree program in a single year. The certificate program in health analytics also takes one year to complete, but it's part-time only. Um, students take a single course per term. So let's talk about the Master of Science in Health Informatics in a little bit more detail. OK. So informatics is the field that studies how people use information and information technology in healthcare. Our program in informatics focuses on the use of information technology to organize, coordinate, manage, and deliver high-quality care. Our goal is to train students for careers in healthcare delivery, health insurance, technology development, consulting, and also academics. Here's an overview of the courses in our health informatics curriculum. 
Our informatics specific courses are shown here in red and they provide training in information systems, information exchange, and healthcare quality. Additionally, our Masters in Health Informatics explores special methods to study these systems and computational techniques to analyze the data. Our master's programs uh, build on a set of core courses, these are shown here in orange, that uh, relate to healthcare policy and research. These courses provide training in how, to, how the healthcare delivery system functions, how to ask questions about these systems to improve them, and how to use statistics to answer and improve on the challenges created by healthcare. And most, more, most importantly, how to work with the richness of healthcare data. A unique aspect of our Master of Science in Health Informatics is that it engages students in a hands-on research project that culminates in a thesis. Each student is paired with a faculty mentor who provides training, access to healthcare data sets, and interaction with faculty and staff conducting research studies. Field work gives students a rich experience in healthcare delivery at Weill Cornell Medicine, New York Presbyterian Hospital, and our other partner institutions that I mentioned earlier. In addition to our incredible master's program, we offer, also offer an exciting certificate in health analytics. Jessica, why don't you talk about that, please? Uh, absolutely. We created the certificate in health analytics uh, with the working professional student in mind. What we see in the field is that health-related organizations of all time, all, all ki kinds, are generating mass quantities of data. There's an inherent and increasing need for people who understand the quantitative methods that can turn that data into information. The ultimate goal is to support effective decision making so that we can really make the best use of all that data. Our certificate in health analytics uh, is designed to uh, meet that need. It consists of three courses. <clears throat> the first one is the biostatistics course. This is a pretty intensive uh, course on data analysis, but it really sets up students to um, uh, have the skills that they need to apply these uh, data analytic techniques in the real world. The second course is health data research. And this is a uh, very pragmatic course where students get experience working with different types of data sets. The final course is health data mining, which is another set of computational techniques that are very common today uh, in analyzing large data sets. The goal of these courses to, is to provide our students with the basic tools needed to analyze big data in the health field. Let me make one more point about the certificate program, which is that, the, as I said, this is really uh, aimed at the working professional. And so our courses are held in the early evening. Uh, so that people who are working full-time can still complete this certificate program while uh, really not disrupting their jobs. Great. Thank you, Jessica. <laughs> it's also worth noting that we have a third program, a Master of Science in Health Policy and Economics. You can watch tomorrow evening's webinar for more information on that. So let's talk about your application. Uh, the application is live until February 1st. So you're able to apply uh, at any time. Simply go to hpr.wil, that's W-E-I-L-L, dot Cornell, dot edu, slash apply. We require three letters of recommendation, which you can submit any time during your application process. Once they're finished, your recommenders can send them directly to us by emailing HPR hyphen education at med.cornell.edu. We'll put that email address up at, at the end of the presentation as well. We require the latest official transcripts from your undergrad institutions as well as from any graduate degree you completed. You also need to write a personal statement. This is probably the most important part of your application and that describes your interest in the healthcare industry and in this program in particular. We recommend that you begin working on your personal statement as soon as possible in order to have ample time to revise and edit and make it as strong as possible. Along with those requirements, you'll sum submit your online application on a $60 application fee. 
we ask that you follow up with your recommenders. Make sure they've submitted your letters of recommendation. Also follow up with your institutions. Make sure that they've sent along your official transcripts. You can reach out to us at any time to check on the status of your application. Let me make two final notes about our admissions process. Uh, we don't require standardized test scores for applicants. Uh, however, if you've got those test scores, we do strongly recommend that you submit them. Um, in our experience, they can really help strengthen an application. We accept uh, GRE scores, MCAT scores, or GMAT scores. Uh, finally, if you're an international applicant, we'll need recent TOEFL scores uh, or an equivalent test. Okay, so let's take a moment and uh, look at our, uh, the website at Wild Cornell Medicine if you haven't done so already. Let's click and visit our education page. Here you can find uh, a lot of information. I invite you to go here and check this out. You'll find uh, information about all of our different programs, our faculty, upcoming events, and more information about the application process. So let's go there. As we mentioned before, the application is live and we're available here to answer any questions. So that's all you need to uh, be able to start your process. Um, great. So we're really interested in any questions that um, people might have submitted. Um, um, one of the most common questions that we get is what sort of background preparation do, uh, do I need as an applicant? Do I need to have a medical background or um, information technology background? Steve, do you want to take that question? Sure. Um, our, our applicants often come from a, a nice diversity of, of backgrounds. Um, some might come from a medical background and be interested in, in obtaining more technical skills and learning about how information technology works. Others might have that information technology background, like a degree in computer science, but really want to learn more about healthcare and how that works and what healthcare data is like. So those are the most common. And people usually have one or the other, but not both. But some people have neither, and that's fine too. Some people might come from a business background and just be interested in this intersection of, uh, of, uh, uh, of medical, medicine and, uh, and informatics. So um, we uh, encourage a variety of backgrounds in our program. Nothing is required. You do mm -hmm. need a bachelor's degree in something. Uh, that's the minimal requirement. But we really encourage you in your personal statement to um, argue why your particular background is a great fit for our program. We got a follow-up question about whether there are any specific prerequisite classes or courses. And uh, the answer is no. Um, there are no specific prerequisites that anybody has to have had before applying. Um, successful applicants before the first day of class, um, there will be a, um, a brief required introduction to a software package that we use for our statistical classes. Um, that, so information about that will be sent out to you know, admitted students um, to be completed in July, August before the first day of the classes in September. So a question here is, when is the last day to apply for the next session in the Master of Science? So uh, our, our program, um, as Jessica said earlier, always starts in September, uh, so if for, particularly for those of you who are doing um, full-time, that would start in September and end in July. Uh, uh, even if you're part-time, the program typically would start in, um, in September. So uh, this coming uh, September is what everyone's applying for, and uh, the February 1st is the, uh, the date that the application closes. Okay, so I encourage all of you to think of more questions, even if it's a really simple question and you'd like to understand it better. A lot of other people have that same question, so uh, feel free to ask anything. Uh, one question that we have gotten before is whether graduates of the certificate program uh, can transition to the master's program. And uh, again, the answer is yes. Um, certificate graduates do have to reapply, or rather they have to go through the application process and have their um, 
uh, materials be evaluated for the master's program. But if they are accepted, then all of the credits that they earned from the certificate program do, in fact, transfer over. Our next question asks if applicants are eligible for scholarships. Um, so when you go to our website on the, that education page we're looking at, you'll see that there is a link there for financial aid uh, and related questions. Uh, while Cornell Medicine has a financial aid department that will talk to you even while you're in this early phase of contemplation and applying, helping you to figure out how you, you can afford it. Um, so that's the mechanism that most people use. We don't, uh, as a department right now, have a special um, departmental scholarship mechanism to support students. So it's the usual uh, national methods for, um, for financial aid that are available to you. Uh, a number of, we do have um, several research assistant and teaching assistant opportunities that are open to students every year. Um, so many of our students do um, get some sort of support towards their degree program. Um, we also have a number of students who get tuition reimbursement from their employers, and we're very happy to work with, uh, you know, with you and your employer, provide documentation or whatever is needed to help you apply for that tuition reimbursement. Um, I'd just like to repeat or emphasize what Steve said. We really do encourage you to start thinking about these issues, talk to the financial aid office, even if you haven't submitted your application yet, um, just to start planning ahead, because this is obviously something that's going to affect, um, uh, for example, how quickly you want to do the program, whether you'd like to do it while working or, or full time. All right, so I uh, keep the questions coming. These are, these are great questions. Really, anything that's on your mind, feel free just to type it into that um, question uh, window on your screen and we'll, we'll, we'll get to it. Uh, for our next question, um, they ask, uh, what kinds of jobs have graduates gone into? So um, let's talk a, bit, a little bit about that. Jessica, what are, um, what are some examples of, for some of our graduates? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. And it's actually very diverse. Um, uh, we've had people, it, because it, it depends in part of what they specialized in while they were a master's student here, and then also what background they brought to the program. Uh, so we have had students go into electronic health record implementation jobs. What that means is these, uh, they go to work for organizations where they're actually rolling out new information technologies and they need to you know, hire people who are familiar both with, with the technical side of things but also how the healthcare system works. A second um, type of job that people have gone into is uh, data analytics. We've had several students who have gone into different sorts of um, jobs involving analyzing health data, um, health insurance data, um, making sense of the you know vast quantities of raw data that are uh, that are increasingly available today. Um, we've had people with a clinical background um, go back to their original you know clinical jobs, their doctors or nurses. Um, and but now be qualified to take more of a leadership role in the technology in their organization. So those are some examples of different sorts of jobs. And so I think you can see from that that the type of jobs you're qualified for vary depending on um, your interests and the skill set that uh, that you had before the program as well. Uh, another uh, other candidates have gone to work for some of the big uh, consulting houses. Right. Um, uh, you know, like McKenzie and, and other types of places that are, are really looking for uh, people with these skills which are hard to find out there. And so uh, consulting houses are one of many sources of, of, of these new jobs. Um, one thing, I'm not sure if everyone on the, um, uh, on the webinar is aware of this, but there, there are PhD programs in uh, health informatics, biomedical informatics um, throughout the country. Um, we do not yet have one of these, but our master's students are, are quite well prepared if they are interested in moving on to a PhD. Um, they're very well prepared to apply for those programs as well. Okay. Um, uh, again, uh, feel free to type your questions in. Um, one uh, basic uh, question is um, when will we announce decisions? So um, after reviewing 
your applications. Uh, we will be announcing our decisions the week of March 14th. So we'll let you know then. And, um, and we hope to <laughs> offer you good news. Um, one aspect of the admissions process that I think is uh, not on the website is the fact that um, applicants who are are being very seriously considered will be invited for a, a Skype or an in-person interview. Um, and that will be um, uh, in the end of February. Is that right? <laughs> I forgot to look up the date. But right. um, that will be... Uh, that will be a good sign if you're invited for an interview. <laughs> Great. Um, we, we should probably add that to it. Here, so here's a question. What percentage of graduates uh, landed a full-time uh, position soon after graduation? So um, I'll, I'll start answering that, and then Jessica can uh, correct my, uh, uh, my uh, assessment of this. It's a little tricky to answer because some um, uh, of the students who've passed through the program already had a job at an organization and were looking to enhance the job position that they were in. So for example, they were in a medical organization and they really wanted to enhance their knowledge of, of information systems. So they would um, be in the, sa uh, job, the same organization but get promoted or transferred to a new, new and more, uh, more interesting job position. So you have to subtract those people. So for the others that had no job at all, I believe all of them are placed now. Uh, uh, I was going to add that many of the students who are employed are actually sponsored for the master's program by their current employer. So um, they clearly, the employer sees that as an investment and it would be kind of a bad thing if they got a new job. <laughs> so um, uh, early when in the certificate program, we had um, uh, uh, very high placement rate in the master's program. It's it is actually much higher now. We've got all of our um, uh, all of our graduates are in relevant job categories. I'm sorry. The reason I'm hesitating is I'm not sure it's entirely within six months, which was yeah. our our goal is to get everyone within who placed within six months. Right. So it's not, I guess if looking at the question soon uh, after graduation, soon after right. graduation for so, some yeah. <laughs> applicants, it took them a little longer than a few months to find that job. But most, I would say, in the 90s, 90 uh, percent yeah. um, were able to find jobs um, pretty quickly. Okay. Any more questions? Uh, here, uh, related to what we were saying earlier, a question is: um, I don't work in the healthcare field, but I would, I, I would, um, would like to in the future. Um, how, you know, will I be able to? And absolutely, um, one of the uh, main purposes of this program is to prepare people who have no knowledge of the healthcare system to be able to function in, in that workforce. So that's both sort of, if you will, macroscopic uh, knowledge about how the whole U.S. healthcare system functions, which you, if you don't know, it's very complex, particularly how health insurance and, and other aspects uh, work. So that's part of it. But in addition, learning how healthcare is delivered on a daily basis. So one interesting way we do that is we ha actually have field experiences where students actually go and see how an emergency room works or go on rounds and, and watch what happens in, in the hospital setting when, when doctors are going from patient to patient. So with experiences like that, you really uh, get a, a real visceral sense of how healthcare works. In addition, a tremendous amount of immersion working with healthcare data and uh, learning how that works. So absolutely, you can transition from knowing nothing about the healthcare system to be able to go to that interview and get that job. Uh, one question that we um, we frequently get is about our relationship with Cornell Tech, which is the other Cornell graduate campus in New York City. And uh, let me talk a little bit about that because I think it's a real asset to our program. Um, Cornell has another graduate campus uh, called Cornell Tech. It's currently headquartered in Chelsea, and it, it, uh, we're currently building uh, new headquarters for it on Roosevelt Island on the east side. Um, Cornell Tech is offers master's programs 
uh, limited to students with a software engineering or a computer science background who are specifically interested in developing new technologies, most of them consumer technologies, for the and, and commercializing them. So that's a very exciting group of collaborators to have. Um, uh, they are not uh, particularly closely, um, they don't have any medical expertise at that campus, and so they frequently collaborate with us to develop um, and test new technologies with doctors and patients. Um, we've had, uh, we've shared some courses across the two campuses, and we've had um, students of ours working um, on field experiences with uh, faculty over there as well. So it's another um, set of resources that uh, students in our health informatics program have access to. All right, uh, last chance to ask your question. Um, if you have anything you'd like to know, now's the time to type it in. All right, I'm not seeing any more questions, but those were great. Uh, so thank you for all of those of you that uh, contributed your questions. Oh, was there? Oh, whoops, uh, we do have one final question, oh, good one. Good, um, good timing. Do we have companies recruiting specifically on campus for our students? And the answer is yes. Um, uh, we've got, we've had, we've done this in a couple different ways. We've had individual consulting firms uh, recruit uh, have intensive uh, recruitment sessions with our with our entire student body, um, and then we've also had career fairs in which um, we invite representatives from the various hospitals and healthcare organizations and health IT um, uh, industry in town um, to come and talk to students about the job opportunities that that are either currently available or might in the future be available at their at their locations as well. Another industry that we didn't talk about and who's also reached out to us, different uh, insurance companies have contacted us about what, you know, our graduate students and who, who's graduating and, you know, what skills do they have. So that's another example of, a, of an a, a industry sector that's interested in hiring the, this type of people to do, for example, health analytics. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. Great questions. Uh, so I guess we'll be wrapping this up. Um, as we mentioned earlier, this is uh, recorded and will be posted on our website tomorrow. So please feel free to come back and review anything that you might have missed, or if you came in late, then it's all there. Thanks so much. I, I look forward to reading your applications. Um, have a good day. <laughs>